Dude. What? Why are you in bed? Why on you? I'm a wallet. Okay, yeah. Did you know there's a comic where Spider-Man gave birth to himself? Wait, what? Hey, I'm fully clothed. That was convenient. Yeah, he was apparently turned into a massive spider, impregnated with himself, and then gave birth to himself at the age he already was. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, the comics get weird. Man, superpowers really seem like more stress than they're worth. Yeah, but you say the same thing about getting up. True. Counterpoint. Basically, every superhero is ever close to them dying. There's probably a comic about their own death, too. Yeah, well, writers just kind of put in whatever's convenient at the time. Yeah, I mean, just out of nowhere, radioactive spider- Ah! What? I think- No way. I just got bitten by a radioactive spider. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, I'm freaking out. What? Because of how painfully forced that was written in? No, I told you I don't want superpowers! I can't deal with this shit! I can hardly watch Let It Go without breaking down! Okay, just think about this like it's any other problem. Okay, any other problem. Any other pro- ah! That was just terrifying. Simon, just what do you usually do when things go bad? Um, play video games. What? No, something that'll help. That's it. I could play the games and see how Peter Parker dealt with having the powers, and also get practice being a superhero. I really hate that I'm stuck with you. Hell yeah. Movie-based games get a really shitty rep, which I guess they deserve... But I don't know, I've always had a soft spot for them. The idea of playing inside a movie or show has always been awesome to me, and I know it has potential. It just seems untapped. Instead of seeing an opportunity for a great game, companies just see a cash grab, which is disappointing. And that's generally what comes of it. But, I remember Spider-Man for the PS2 being awesome when I was a kid. As for Spider-Man 2, I've never played it in my life, but I've heard legends of it. And if they're true, this just might be the game to realize licensed movie games. But I don't know, we'll have to see. Let's get to it! Let's do it! Oh, okay. Greetings. Welcome to the tutorial. Ah, the tutorial guy! I remember you! Oh man, this is the greatest narrator to ever inhibit the fucking earth. Listen. Well, good for you. I'm gonna grab a ham sandwich. You see? That's... he's the best. That's it. He's... he's a king. King... king of narrators. And now while you might say that that's not much of a title, Web swing over to your next objective. Use your compass and height meter to find it. If you can't find it, I can't help you. Unplug the machine and walk away. What you doing up here, Pencil Neck? Who you calling Pencil Neck? Uncle Ben. Murdered. <laughs> now that I'm out in the open, I gotta say the swinging is... I mean, it works just fine. Uh, it's kind of static, but how else are they going to do it? You automatically go forward and you steer up and down, left, right, webs just stick to whatever planet, I guess, is between my hands and the edge of the universe. And uh, it doesn't make much sense, but whatever. I'm not going to get hung up about something stupid like that. I'm Spider-Man! Hey, you! Back off, ugly! Burn! 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 What's wrong? Getting tired? <laughs> Damn it! God, this is actually kind of hard. How the fuck? God! You actually need to get pretty proficient with the button combos, so I, I guess that's good. It's just hard. And of course, because of the difficulty, this is the furthest I ever got when I was a kid. I guess that says something about me. Although I, I mean, I was five. Hey, you killed my uncle! Some guy's uncle! These are the years when a man becomes the man he's going to be for the rest of his life. Just be careful who you change into. 
Who the fuck is talking right now? A man. That's not. With this great power comes great responsibility. What the fuck? What happened? Don't even die. <laughs> General Slocum has given Oscorp a week to prove that we can develop a working serum. I can only assume that Spider-Man relates to our problem in some way. <laughs> what? God, dude, that is not gonna hold up in court. You can't show me evidence that he's not the problem. You know what the best part of this cutscene is? He's not even the Green Goblin yet, so he's just like, you see that Spider-Man guy? Fuck that guy. <laughs> Oh shit, it's Iron Man! This wall is coming down! With lasers! And the thugs are still as entertaining as ever. Sorry, no autographs. You'll eat those words. <laughs> I don't make the rules, I just enforce them. It's time to stop that freak! Vic, make it happen! I'm on it! Oh god, we're gonna get our end one! Now one thing I should mention that's really starting to show is when you're moving and you move the camera, Spidey keeps walking in the same direction he was before, unless you readjust the stick. Which means he's moving relative to the world rather than the camera. But only for a second every now and then. See, what you're meant to do is fucking pick one. Imagine you're playing Super Mario Galaxy and just for a second it swaps to Resident Evil 1 controls every now and then. It's exactly that, and exactly as frustrating and annoying and clunky as it sounds. Other than that, the controls do work. <laughs> Which I guess is a compliment. Shocker! He's heading into the subway tunnels. I have to stop him fast. Wow. It is like I can actually visualize the talent spewing out of Tobey Maguire's arteries. Come on, Shock. You know I can't let you run around down here without a chaperone. <laughs> what? This is so strange. Like, it sounds like the writer had fun writing these terrible lines, but Tobey Maguire reads them like he's at a funeral, which might make sense for the character if he weren't reading lines like, Where did Shocker find all you guys? Is there a website or something? All right, let's go get Shocker. I, uh, oh shit, okay, uh, wait, what the fuck, I was clearly out of the hitbox there, okay, fuck, shit, I, I was behind the barricade, what the fuck, oh my god, now I have no health, let's just see how this goes, I, okay, where do I, fuck, shit, wait, go good, 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 well, now this is just a bunch of bullshit right here, now, you can go in between lanes, but in the other lane he'll just immediately shoot you again, and the small time allotted to get to safety again is just atrocious. It's worse that spaces between each safe spot aren't consistent, and sometimes there just won't even be one. I swear I've tried every possible route and I hardly made it. And there's definitely no way to do it without losing health, which should absolutely never be the case in any video game. But, whatever. I'm finally done and- oh my- God, shock is powerful. Well, no, 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 no! Guess what? Fuck! So then we gotta go find the vulture, so we go to the tallest, most famous landmark in New York, Big Ben. Now, as clunky and cramped as this looks, it's actually kind of a good sequence. At least compared to, you know. Don't do it, Vulture. You still have so much to live for. Just what we needed to round this game out. The suicide jokes. Must be a pain to get groceries up here. <laughs> okay, actually, you know, the writing in this game can be pretty cool. I think it's mainly the voice actors who really didn't cut it. Hey, Vulture, didn't your mother ever teach you that stealing is wrong? I, um... I'm gonna have to take that one back. Okay, this is kind of fun. I mean, kind of terrible controls, but kind of fun as well. Ooh. Now, Vulture, you can't go around taking things that don't belong to you. Yeah, I mean, look at that massive hall. Here we are, our first battle with Green Goblin, and goddamn, this is actually pretty fun. I wish there were more in-air battles in the movies, because this is cool. And then some more stuff, and we end up getting a fairly lengthy stealth mission in Oscorp, and... You know what, it's actually pretty fun, it was cool. The controls actually work best for cramped and tight locations rather than big and open ones. I guess they probably figured if they get that down, the other will come naturally, but no, that did not happen at all, this sucks. And then we get to a massive robot, and I just, you know, I don't quite remember this part from the movie. But whatever, just have to destroy the power generator, scatter the round, and we're good. So 
So this is absolute fucking bullshit! You gotta get these stupid fucking generators that are protected by the stupid fucking robot, stupid fucking laser beams, and you know how you avoid them? You don't. That's how you fucking avoid them. And note that this game does not feature our friendly old power regenerating health, so taking into account the health facts around this part, we still even then have very little health to get past this guy. And you know what the absolute most infuriating part is? It's inconsistent. Difficulty can work if you're in control, but sometimes you go in there and make it out with enough health to milk a cow, and sometimes you die on impact with full health, and you just lose your fucking mind over how anyone could design a game so ridiculously incompetently. Holy shit! Spider-Man! Spider-Man! Does whatever a spider can! Can he swing from a whip? Does it matter cause now he's dead! I've done it. I've slain the beast. That's the last generator. Now for that sensor array. Oh, that's funny. Isn't that funny, dear? No! So after another whole lot of run around and hope you don't die, Mary Jane gets kidnapped. Mary Jane. <laughs> yeah, Mary Jane. And then you have to chase her and it just keeps getting worse. With this, you have to keep up with Goblin without losing him and there isn't a speed up button or anything and I have no clue on even what you're supposed to be doing right and what you can do to be wrong, but I just... You just sometimes win and you always lose. Like, look at this. This was like my 10th try and this is right from the beginning. <laughs> what was that? I only ended up being able to do it by turning way earlier than him to cut him off and I still barely scraped in. This game doesn't make any sense. I'm actually starting to wonder if your speed or health or whatever just fluctuates and if you get lucky you won't die just for an illusion of difficulty because it's that random. I mean it seems like the design could have worked other times but they screwed it up a lot. And here we are, the big final battle. Stupid fucking game. Well, that was much worse than I remembered. Ah, fuck. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your smile You're all I've ever wanted And my arms are open wide Cause you know just what to say And you know just what to do And I wanna tell you so much I love you Okay, so if it's not obvious enough, you pull the trigger to shoot a web, but you actually have to make sure there's somewhere to attach the web. On a building, a crane, even a helicopter. But like, this means that what used to just be waiting for you to swing to the next area while changing directions, going up and down, whatever, your brain is constantly at work, thinking where the next web is going to go, and your direction, and speed, and how to use your momentum to your advantage, and it really gives the illusion you have flying around like Spider-Man, it's awesome! Now who's telling you about all this? Is it George? Is it George from the jungle? No, that seems irrelevant. It's the tutorial guy! He's back! Uh, before we go any further, I think it might be a good idea to save your progress. If you could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the writing is exponentially more fantastical this time. And I gotta say, this game really sets out to emulate the movie in a coherent way. The cutscenes set up parts of the movie and when just swinging around, you'll hear Spidey monologuing about how he's feeling about the situation, and honestly uses one of the biggest strengths video games have as an art form, where you can have a lot of chill time just talking and thinking about how things are right now. No matter how hard it is, I can't abandon my friends. 
Because of this, characters and situations get more meaning, more depth, because you get more time to think over everything. It's almost like the movie's extended cut, except you also get to play it, which is just fucking phenomenal. Now there is of course added characters and situations to add a few more hours of playtime, but it works and certainly doesn't take away from the game in any way. Jesus Christ, this is how a movie game should be. Now as for a game alone, how is it? Well, alright, the city this time feels alive. This game actually is a free roamer. There are the main missions, but then there are collectibles, challenges, side quests, random events, random packs of enemies, stores to buy upgrades. It's just so full of content. And all of this extra fun stuff isn't just given to you either, you're actually encouraged to explore, which I love in games. You can walk into a pub and realize it's overrun by gangsters, so you gotta clear them all out and that's just one hideout that you've done. Or you could be swinging around town and hear that someone's yelling road rage at other drivers, so you beat the shit out of their car until it's completely non-functional. Because it's Spider-Man, you can do what you want. You know there's over 200 hit markers scattered around the city. And if you actually manage to hit them all, I'll be impressed, because that means you need a lot of help. I think one of my favorite things about this guy is not only his fantastic delivery, but you can tell he had a good amount of creative input. Like a lot of the time, for example, the, the subtitles aren't even right. You can tell that was that was the script, but he just went, you know what, I got a better idea, let me just do my thing. And I'm like, fucking alright, whatever. I love people having fun with their work, it's awesome. These guys know what they're doing. They know if they have fun with their creative work, it'll make it more fun for the audience too. It's good to know there's a company with such integrity out there. I mean, really, could you imagine people like this pandering to formulas and money-making schemes and not putting effort into innovating, and they make Call of Duty now, don't they? If you played the last game, and I'm sure you did. Yep, yeah, yeah, but please don't remind me. Now, after a good amount of contemplating throughout the game from Peter, he's decided he's finally made the choice to be with his woman, even if he is a superhero. I know what I want to do, I know who I want to be, and I know who I want to be with. I want to be with you. Peter, I'm getting married to John. I can't, I can't do this, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Peter, good night. Well, that didn't work. Luckily though, an octopus man kidnapped her, so we could just save her and we'll get her back, that's how it works. Shh. Now this final boss is kind of random with its almost undodgeable attacks and it's kind of bullshit but I don't know. Bam, there it did it. I gotta say, it's kind of sad that the video game industry has stopped trying to make movie tie-in games. Because as much as they were a cash grab, this is a pretty good example of just the groundwork of how brilliant a movie tie-in game can be. I don't know, I love movies, I love games, and the idea of them merging has so many possibilities. Storytelling has its place in video games, and I almost feel like film-based games could be the gateway to developers really figuring out how to get across great stories in games when you're experiencing the action. I mean, I heard great gameplay was in this, and there was, but what I wasn't expecting for it to do was freaking expand on the film that it tied into. You hear the extended thoughts of characters about situations, and it's just so cool that they use the medium's potential. Especially as many games still haven't got it down today. Like, I think The Last of Us is a great example in how video games even have advantages over film in some aspects when it comes to storytelling. They give you so much to think about and so much time to think about it. The world becomes fleshed out and it's half because not even that the game is forcing you, but it, it lets you think over everything that's going on and think about how people would act in a world like this. Man, must be hard. Just leaving all your stuff behind like that. That ain't the hard part. It really is something I feel is hardly tapped on in the game industry. And then there's the whole thing about games being able to get emotions directly from you and not just empathize with the character. If you could align those and double the impact, <laughs> and on top of that, have those things fuel you when playing great gameplay? It's almost like this art form is still in its baby steps, but Spider-Man 2 is a shining example of what the future could hold. Which is sure as hell a lot more than I expected this game to be. Hats off to you, Treyarch. You truly rocked the worlds before you signed your soul off to Satan himself. So which one's better? Well, one's a pile of shit and the other's the key to unveiling the true potential of video games as an art form. 
So, I, I mean the second one. But one thing's for certain, I now have more than enough practice to test out my powers in the real world. if you actually have powers? No. I got sticky hands, though. Should you go to the hospital? Probably. Oh, thank you for watching! Thank you. Why do you do that? And you, of all people, amazing. Well, if you want to waste some more time, there's more videos. And on Twitter and Tumblr, there's just endless streams of useless crap. It's fantastic. And also, I stream sometimes on Hitbox. So, we'll, so go over there. Hitbox is is Twitch without the delay. So it's literally just better. I anyway. Um, I love you, and I hope you enjoy. Oh, and thanks again, Zan. You rock. Okay, bye now. So how'd you like it? It was good, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there was a third one, wasn't there? No. Nope. Yeah, uh, based off the third movie, I think there was one. No. Nope. Looking it up. Yeah, there totally was one for the PS3. I guess you'll have to do that one too then, huh?